Welcome back, everybody. Yes, today is Throwback Thursday, uh, but no, this is not a flashback. It seems the uh, Russian election meddling conspiracy theory has returned just in time for the election. Um, it seems that, you know, a two-year election to prove that Trump was a Russian agent uh, with the Mueller probe that came up with nothing wasn't enough. No, they, they have to keep this going. So, yeah, according to the FBI director, Chris Wray who just confirmed that Russia is currently meddling in the election to, quote, denigrate Vice President Biden, to denigrate him. Oh, we don't want that, do we? You can't denigrate Vice President Biden. He's above that. You can denigrate Trump all you want. That's fine. Say whatever you want about him, that, that, or Republicans for that matter. But Democrats or Biden, nope, can't do it. So before we get into just discussing how utterly insane this is, let me show you the clip. Yes, I think... Uh, the intelligence community's consensus uh, is that Russia continues to try to influence our elections, um, primarily through what we would call malign foreign influence, uh, as opposed to what we saw in 2016, where there was also an effort to target election infrastructure, you know, cyber targeting. We have not seen that second part yet this year or this cycle. Uh, but we certainly have seen very active, very active uh, efforts by the Russians to influence our election in 2020 uh, through what I would call more the malign foreign influence uh, side of things. Social media, use of, of proxies, uh, state media, online journals, uh, et cetera, an effort to both sow divisiveness and discord. Uh, and, and I think the intelligence community has, has uh, assessed this publicly, uh, to primarily to denigrate Vice President Biden and what the Russians see as kind of an anti-Russian establishment. Um, that's that's essentially what we're seeing in 2020. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know about this guy. Who is this guy? He's definitely no friend of Trump. No friend of America. I mean, I hate to say that, but what this guy is saying, I mean, kind of his face there as the video is paused, I, does he really believe this? And I mean, if you're going to say, oh, well, they see uh, the Democrats as unfriendly and, and Joe Biden as unfriendly to Russia. Well, uh, let's put that to China. I mean, who is more friendly to China? Clearly not Trump or Republicans, which is why they're meddling in the election for Democrats. But you don't hear anything about that. But the FBI uh, director says that Russia wants to denigrate Joe Biden. I just love that word choice. Like that, that it's almost like saying bad things about him, saying negative, mean things about him, or uh, impugning his character. All things that happen during a presidential election, right? That, when has there been a presidential election where both sides didn't attack each other's character, or their policies, or their intelligence? I mean, uh, that's par for the course. That's that's what a presidential election is. That's what politics is. So this is not unusual, but yet they're trying to make it seem like it's unusual, which is something we've seen a lot. But John McCain has unloaded on you in the last uh, 72, 96 hours, as has Sarah Palin. Uh, McCain saying essentially we don't know who Barack Obama is, where he came from. I, I'm an open book. Right. He's not. Were you surprised that he didn't bring it up last night at the debate? And use that line of attack. Well, I am surprised that, uh, you know, we've been seeing um, some pretty over-the-top attacks coming out of the McCain campaign over the last several days, that he wasn't willing to say it to my face. Clearly, they want the American public thinking that anything they see that's negative about Joe Biden uh, is some sort of product of the Russians or Russian propaganda. I mean, forget all those videos that you've seen. I mean, going back forever, okay? I mean, I'm not even talking about just this election cycle. I mean, Biden's known for saying stupid crap, but it's just gotten, as he's gotten older, it's gotten worse and worse. But just forget about all that that you've seen. Just tell yourself that it's, it's the Russians that did it. I mean, I, I don't think anybody on our side is going to do that, and probably very few independents, but I can see Democrats... Like, literally just lying to themselves, convincing themselves that it's the Russians doing that. It's almost more than the mind can handle to think that the U.S. government and the media want you to believe these things. One, that criticism of Joe Biden is the product of Russian meddling. Which uh, is very bad because it sets up this environment where scrutiny of one party's candidate uh, or, or their party is considered to be foreign interference. 
okay, while the gloves are off in regard to the other party. It, it, it's completely messed up. But the media and the Democrats and elements of our own government want Americans to think that criticism and denigrating Trump or Republicans, that's fine. That's okay. But criticism or denigration of Democrats or Biden, that's the Russians. You're a Russian agent, basically, if you do that. You're like a traitor to your country because you're falling for some sort of, I don't know, brainwashing? I mean, and we're going to get to that, what exactly they, it is they're talking about. But, uh, you know, an election won by Trump, that's Russian interference, Russian meddling. But an election won by Democrats, a okay, that's good. Um, you know, a pro-Trump pro rally or a lockdown protest, bad. Left-wing riots and mass protests, okay, that's good. So uh, this is a pattern we're seeing here. But I, I asked earlier, what exactly are they talking about when they say this? In the first place, Russian meddling, it sounds, and they use these words like covert and proxy to make it sound like it's very, you know, like a cloak and dagger or uh, 007. But what exactly are they talking about? I mean, last time it was the organization, uh, Russia had organized some rallies, a few rallies, both for and against Trump, meaning some were pro-Hillary and anti-Trump and uh, some were for Trump. And guess what? The rallies that were against Trump were promoted by MSNBC and CNN. That's right. So in that case, if Russia was trying to sow division and uh, throw disinformation into the election, CNN and MSNBC literally facilitated it. They helped. On November 12th of 2016, it was a Trump bashing love rally. As the liberal media, he piles of praise and promotion on an anti-Trump event in New York City. And they yelled, we're not going to be um, tolerating any sexism or homophobia or racism. And that is really the message. All of sort of these protesters coming together, frustrated, angry. And all, all those people coming together because of Russian agitation. That's according to special investigator Robert Mueller's indictment, quote, Defendants and their co-conspirators through another organization-controlled group organized a rally in New York called Trump is not my president, held on or about November 12th, 2016. It is the most organized protest that I've seen happen here in New York City, and that's good news because, again, as he pointed out to me, they want their message to be heard, don't want violence been seeing across the country and other protests. Uh, yes, the collective. And the collective voice of the liberal media was all chanting one thing. Russia appears to want to benefit from what, what's going on today. And if they can choose the person that will help that, they right. will do it. Yeah. While promoting another. There are people out here, they're chanting, they're, they're banging the drums, and they're explaining that they do not want Donald Trump to be their next president. So beyond that, they also bought some Facebook ads. Other than that, I mean, what did they do? They bought some Facebook ads. Uh, they had some rallies. That's pretty much it. Are we supposed to believe that uh, so many people hated Hillary because of Russia? I mean, really? She had been hated for decades. Uh, Rush Limbaugh, all through the 90s, made his name for, by trolling the Clintons and making fun of uh, Hillary Clinton and, uh, especially. Uh, which is one of the reasons the media has been calling him a sexist all these years, you know, because it's kind of like Trump. If you attack like a female Democrat, that makes you a sexist. They say you're attacking women, plural, even though you're just going after specific individuals. Uh, but he made his name doing that through the 90s. Uh, I guess the Russians started this whole campaign back then. Is that what we're supposed to believe, that people hate Hillary Clinton and didn't want her to be president because... The Russians brainwashed us in the 90s through Rush Limbaugh? Talk about conspiracy theories. Um, Ray also claims that the Russians are sowing discord in the country. And I think that's interesting because I accuse the media of doing that on, on purpose regularly. As far as I'm concerned, they, uh, that's what Chris Ray is doing right here. I mean, let, let's think about that. They say that you cannot denigrate Joe Biden... Uh, if you denigrate him or you criticize him, I guess, it's the product of Russian meddling. Thereby dismissing half the country as Russian agents. I mean, you're basically saying that they have no say in, in the presidency because if they pick Trump, well, they're with Russia. And, that, you know, that means that they, they fell for Russian propaganda and they're basically Russian agents. That feels intensely partisan. And something that will definitely sow discord in this country. And what about China and Iran and everybody else who's meddling in our elections? I mean, in Mexico and, and through the Democrats, illegal uh, foreign nationals in our country, like literally driving policy and driving like votes 
to Democrat politicians. How's that not meddling? That's like direct meddling. So who does China want in office? I mean, if I had to take a wild guess, I'd say it's the party that supports the far left Marxists and communists that are rampaging through our country right now and want to destroy American history. And speaking of all that, uh, in regards to the Democrat support of these Marxist far left groups that I'm sure China is quite happy with. Um, BLM's founder, Elisa Garza, the one who's the trained Marxist, she's teamed up now with a pro-CCP organization called the Chinese Progressive Association, which is obviously a front that's being used to sow discord in the United States. So there you go. And it's, it's proven right here, right on their website, uh, Black Futures Lab, which is a, um, a website that was set up by Garza. And it says right on here, Black Futures Lab is a fiscally sponsored project of the Chinese Progressive Association. That's all for this episode. Again, thank you to all my Patreons and Subscribestar subscribers, as well as all of you who have donated or purchased products from this channel sponsor. Thanks to all of you. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And if you would like to support this channel, uh, you can find all those options in the description or the pinned comment. Also, make sure to join us tonight in my Discord server at 9 p.m. Eastern for our live Discord chat stream. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.